Good morning, good morning. I'm gonna get my glasses. It's but early. Guess what's gonna happen? A bunch of haters gonna start coming to you trying <clears throat> to make you discount what God has done in your life. I heard the spirit of the Lord say, let this be your testimony. Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. I am periscoping blogging on behalf of detour movement it is about 7 51 in the morning um <clears throat> i really don't want to do it really long because i know guys christmas time work kids everything's going on but i wanted to just simply uh bring something to you um I was talking to some friends last night on Bible study, and we did Girls Talk Bible study with my dear sister Juanita Breland and Katrina Hutchinson, and God just stepped in. Good morning. And God just stepped in so immediately, and um, um, we were discussing things, and this morning, um, God just laid something on me. Um, at work, we have this, uh, I work with a lot of younger uh, people, and they always say, let me be great. Let me be great. And um, I, I thought about it and I was like, how come you don't allow yourself to be great? Why don't we allow ourselves to do the very thing that God designed us to do? Why don't we allow ourselves to be the great, the the successful? Why don't we allow ourselves to be the, the, the lenders and not the borrowers? Why don't we allow ourselves to be the head and not the tail? And I think it's because we're afraid of the weight of what will transpire when we truly accept the call that God has on our life. I believe that when we begin to understand what God has for us and, and what he's ordained for us and the people that we're allowed to touch, that at some point we get fearful, at some point we get a little, we back off of it. But I wonder... Um, what would happen if we would allow ourselves to be great? What would happen if we would move from the back door to the front door? I wonder what would happen if we would stop playing small and begin to be great. Um, one of my um, one of the men I admire most and read all of his books was um, Nelson Mandela. And Nelson Mandela said this. He said, you playing small does not serve the world. Who are you not to be great? Who are you not to be to be great. Who are you not to be great? Um, he said this, he said, Nelson Mandela said this, he said, I had no epiphany, no, no singular revelation, no moment of truth, but I had a collection of things that happened. I had a collection of systems that happened. I had a collection of things that begin to play on me. And I decided that because of those things, I had no choice but to stand up. I had no choice but to free myself from my own mental prison. I had no choice but to step up because there was a need. Who are you not to be great? Who are you not to be successful? Who are you not to step into the fullness of God? Who are you not to step into the joy and the promises of God? Who are you not to? We can put everybody else on platforms. We can put everybody else on pedestals. We can say, well, they are able to do this or they speak eloquently or they write this or they sing like this. But who are you? not to be great? Who are you not to be called from obscurity into the limelight? Who are you? Speaking personally to myself, I have never had a problem playing the backfield. But however, in 20, 2015 and the beginning of 2016 is soon upon us. It is not time for us to be silent. It is time for us to cry aloud and spare not. It is time for us not to just shrink down into obscurity and say, well, God will promote me. But God has already promoted you. The minute that you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, the minute you fell on your face and you begin to repent, the minute you lifted up your hands and said, I surrender all, God already qualified you. So while we're waiting for man's stamp of approval or a on the back, get over yourself and get over people and get into the joy in the things that God has for you. No man has the right to tell you what you can and not can and cannot do. What God has for you really is for you. Who are you not to be great? 
I am recalled of a story of Gideon <clears throat> and Gideon was a small man and a minute man in the eyes of others. And he hid because of the, the things that were transpiring in, in Jerusalem. He hid and he didn't want anything to do with it. He didn't want to touch it. He didn't want to deal with it. But when God called him, he had to come from the background to the forefront to do a work for the kingdom. It, 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 it makes me aggravated when I see so much potential sitting in the background. It aggravates me when I see so many men and so many women playing the background because they feel inferior. Who told you you were inferior? Who told you you couldn't preach? Who told you you couldn't sing? Who told you you couldn't be an author? Who told you you couldn't be a multimillionaire? Who told you that? You told you that because God would never tell you anything that would not produce good things. The Bible says in Jeremiah, he says, I know the plans I have for you. So if he knows the plans that he has for you to succeed and to bring an expected end, who are you to deny? And who are you to say, God, I can't do this on the backside of a mountain. Moses being a murderer said, Lord, I don't speak so well. And he said, that's fine. I'm not sending you under your own power. I'm not sending you under your own strength. I'm sending you in me. So the problem is that when we begin to hug and hold on to the simple fact that God is sending us in him, we can do everything and anything except fail. There's three points that you need to get. One, you need to get over you, get over yourself, get over your insignificant ways. Get over the things that got you bound. Throw those out the window. Put them on an altar somewhere and don't pick them up. But you got to get over self. The biggest battle we'll face will not be the world. It won't even be the devil. It'll be you. So you have to get over yourself. You have to get over your way of thinking. You have to go get over the way that people have told you that things are supposed to be. You have to get over self. Number two, after you've gotten over self, get over people. Get over what people say. You don't have to do it how anybody else does it. How do I know that? Because Jesus didn't heal everybody the same way the same time. So clearly he does what he wants to do. He's omnipotent. He can do whatever he wants. So get over yourself. Get over people. Three. You ready for this? Three. Get over your limitations. Get over the things you don't have and grab a hold of the things you do have. The things you do have. Grab a hold of those things. You have resources upon resources. Connect yourself with people who are going to take you. See, this is the problem. We're so consistent with, well, I don't have enough money or I don't have enough resources. And then we we buy into that and we don't connect ourselves to the people that have. I don't have everything. So I connect myself with Girls Talk Movement. I connect myself with Detour Movement. I connect myself with these people. Why? Because they have the resources. So if they have the resources, they have what I have. See, the problem is we're part of the body. Body, the body. Some people are the hands, right? The hands, the the hands. You see this? The hands. But the hand can't function right without the wrist, and the wrist can't function right without the arm, and the arm can't function right with the el without the elbow. So see, we're part of the body. So if we're part of the body, I'm not going to despise my hand because. Because it's not the wrist. And I'm not going to despise my wrist because it's not the arm. The issue is you have to get over all of your limitations. Granted, you may only be the finger. But with the finger, you can grab a hold of the hand and the hand can grab a hold of the wrist and we can grab a hold of souls. It's that simple. You have to remove yourself from all of the things that are holding you. Who are you not to be great? Who are you not to be great? Who are you? That you would say, you know what, God, appreciate you calling me, but I'm good. You know, I'm just going to stand back here and play the black round. That is not humility. That is a false sense of humility. Humility has nothing to do with saying, oh, no, 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 God, you know, I'm good. Thank you so much. No, humility says, I can't do this without you, God. I can't do this without my sisters. I can't do this without my brothers. I can't do this, God, without them because we're the body. See, we have a false sense of humility. Hanging your head low and saying, oh God, you know, really just not me. That's not humility. That's a false sense of humility. That's actually an act of pride because you know inside yourself what God has equipped you with. You know inside of yourself the dreams that God has given you. You know inside of yourself the thing that you wake up every morning and every night hearing in your voice and in your spirit. So who are you not to be great? Who are you not to be successful? Who are you not to be the head and not the tail? We live in a society where they have convinced us <clears throat> what love looks like. They have convinced us what success looks like. Success does not look like an open relationship between Will and Jada. That is not success. That is not a successful marriage, honey. What is successful marriage is, is two people who have decided to commit themselves, who pray before they make a decision, who say, you know what? This is what love looks like. Love looks like committed. Love looks like connected to God. That's what success looks like. We have been, con we have been conditioned to think that love means 
that we have to do all this thing. The world has a false sense of what the things of God is. Do you understand? It has a false sense of thinking what God is. But the truth of the matter is we are the head. We are not the tail. We will be the lenders and not the bars. I'm not talking about buying jets. I'm talking about buying community centers where kids can come and hear how great they are, where they can be affirmed. I'm not talking about doing anything outside of the kingdom. I'm talking about building the kingdom with souls on top of souls, doing what you're supposed to be doing. I challenge you in this in this season. In the season of, of Christmas, when the Bible says that we have these gifts, and, and 2 Corinthians 4, 7 says we have these gifts in earthen vessels. We have gifts inside of earthen vessels. But who are you not to be great? Who are you not to grab a hold of the greatness that God has all over you? Who are you? Who are you to say, God, no, not me? It is... It amazes me. We, we quote scriptures over and over again. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. And we wave our hands and we do our two steps and we get the backup from the hammock and we go out of church and we do nothing. We do nothing. We say, we say, I am an overcomer, yet we refuse to overcome ourselves. We say I'm an overcomer, but we refuse to overcome that thing in our mind that says we cannot. Hmm. Jesus going to the cross never said I cannot. He said, I don't want to go, but I'm going to go. He said, he said this, this isn't exactly how I, I wanted to do it, but if it has to be done, I'll do it. Who are you not to be great? Again, I love, I love Maya Angelou, and, I, and I, she said this. This is, this is good. She said this. She said, if you get, give. If you learn, teach. How simple is that? If you get, give, and if you learn, teach. January, we will, there will be a branding brunch, right? Here's what, here's, here's what happened. This is what they did. They figured out things, right, on how to brand yourself and how to make yourself more, more palatable for, for, the, for the people so that, so that you can, you know, correct yourself and, and operate and function. So basically what they did is they said, we're going to bring people together and we're going to... I think it's like ten dollars, fifteen dollars for a ticket, right? And that's really fifteen dollars, that's really nothing. <clears throat> I eat that. You understand what I'm saying? And you take this and you give this to them, you sow into them, right? Because the because Maya said if you give, if you get give. So what they did was they got good word and they decided to give it to you, and then they decided to teach you because they learned and they teach. So here's the thing. We are holding up other people's blessing by our inability to be obedient to our mission. I let that sit there for a minute. Get that. Just just get that. You have Jill and Tro. You have Juanita Breland and Girls Talk Movement. You have SOS Saving Our Sons and Sisters. And and they have all of these, they have all of these missions, right? You stay with me for a second. Watch this. They have all of these things. You have uh, Sister Felicia Stevens Ministries and, and she's doing real talk. And they have all of these things. And because we're not obedient. Because we're not obedient to to allow them to bless us so that we can receive the impartation and go out and reach more souls. We miss it. We miss it. Do you get what I'm saying? We miss it. This is why we, we think we can do it all by ourselves, but we can't. But we miss it. Jesus came on the scene being all God and all man at the same time, grabbed 12 people, told them to leave what they were doing. Follow me. And then after he told them to follow him, he said, I'm going to show you things that you can't that you can't do. And then when he left the scene, he said, greater works shall you do in my name. Get this. We're running around. Saying we want to be just like Jill and, Jill and Trey. We want to be just like Felicia Stevens, Juanita Bynum, T.D. Jakes. And that's the real truth is you're going to be greater based on your obedience to take the impartation. I know. It's, it's shocking, isn't it? It's shocking. Because the impartation gives you greater. It gives you a double anointing. Think about Elijah and Elisha. He followed after this man. And when he was taken up and away... He received a double portion. He did twice as much as the man before him did. So here's the thing. You are sitting here watching this and, and, you're, and you're trying to figure out, well, she's, she's saying this, but I mean, really, you want me to pay money to do this? We pay money to see Star Wars, a Tyler Perry play, Jill Scott, Adele. We'll pay money to see these things. But here's the beautiful thing. We won't, we won't sow into a ministry that'll change your life. We won't sow into ministries that'll do something. I'm telling you, when we get an obedient, when we begin to get an obedient heart and we begin to get an obedient soul, we begin to pour in and we begin to be imparted into so that we can do what God has called us to do. 
The Bible says, listen, and I'm going to get out your ear. But the Bible says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Get this. He said, pour out. We have women and men who have been poured into. And they have word that they want to pour out into you. But you will remove your vessel because you have issues because we've said, I'm not just worthy. I'm not great. I'm just, you know, I just can't do this. But open your hands, receive the blessings that these men and these women are giving to you so that you can grow, so that you can be great in God, so that you can be great. Allow yourself to be great. Allow yourself to be great. That's allow yourself to be great. I work with young people and they're so funny, but the one girl said, she said, she said, I want, she said, let me be great. I am no longer asking permission for anyone to let me be great. I am no longer asking permission for anyone to let me be who God said I am. I am great. I am fabulous. I will be everything that God said I am. And if you don't like it, I won't know because I'm not paying attention to you. Plain and simple. I am over myself. I am over people. I would love to say that I'm going to wait till 2016 to bust out, but it's not true. I'm going to bust out right now because I was, thank you, I was appointed and called to be great. I was anointed for trouble. So let's go. You can wait for 2016, but we got some days left in 2015. How about you go out and be great today? But you go ahead and, and speak that word that you've been dying to speak. Start that book you were supposed to write seven years ago. How about you go ahead and do exactly what you were supposed to do years ago? How about you write that great song, that poetry book? How about you sing that song that you were supposed to go record that CD that you said you were going to do? How about you go ahead and stop being minute and be great? Go ahead. Take it. I love Charlena Snyder. Take it up a notch. Matter of fact, take it up two notches. Go all the way up. I, I, I love this. Everybody's always turning up. I'm not going to turn up anymore. I'm going to show out for the kingdom. I'm going to show out for the kingdom. So the next time you see me, expect to see me showing out for the kingdom. Why? Because I'm a kingdom citizen. I got all the benefits of the kingdom. My father is in heaven. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. There's nothing that shall be withhold from me. Any good and great thing that God said is for me shall be for me. I put my hand on the enemy's neck and say, you can't have my victory, my joy, my peace, my love, my hope, or any of that. Look, why? Because 2015, we're going to set it off. And 2016, mm, mm, mm. if you want it, go get it. If you want it, go get it. Again, Nelson Mandela said that it was not a singular thing. It was not an epiphany that I had. He just got tired of being imprisoned in his own mind. I am tired of being imprisoned in my own mind and by people's thoughts. Again, you playing small does not serve the world. Better yet, you playing small does not serve the kingdom. Who are you not to be great? I expect to see my sisters on the New York best-selling list, Jill, Sister Felicia. I expect to see you on the best-seller list, period. Period. So again, there it is. My grandmother said this, and I'm about to go. She said, talk is cheap. It takes work to buy land. So enough of the talk. Books need to be written. Word needs to be given. Action needs to be put forth. So, enough time has been spent being small. It's time for, the, time for the real church to step up and do what God said to. Sisters, y'all be blessed. Be blessed, be blessed, be blessed. I love y'all. I got to go do ministry. Love you. Got to go do something for the kingdom. Y'all be blessed. Mm.